it's now time to step it down a bit and the mass of fortune into a Swiss bank account with Tropico. Hello everyone and welcome back. A few months ago I came across a very interesting board. At first I was surprised that someone even bothered putting a PCI Express together with Socket 478. But then I noticed that it was ASROC and they have done some other even more surprising motherboards. So my first thought was to see if I can get Windows 98 working with this board since the AGP motherboards are getting rarer and more expensive with each passing year. Also supporting socket 478 CPUs and having two PCIs it leaves out only the PCI Express as an exotic connector that didn't overlap with Windows 98 support period. The chipset 945GC was released in May 2005 and also has an integrated graphics card the GMA950 that we will not be covering today. Intel never released a Windows 98 driver for it but my experience shows that Windows 98 doesn't really need a motherboard driver as long as you get it running. For connectivity this motherboard has the usual two IDE connectors and one floppy connector. It also has four serial ATA ports that can be used in compatibility mode and enable us to use serial ATA hard drives on Windows 98 without any issue. But today we will use an IDE mechanical hard drive. The hard drive we are going to use today is the 40GB Seagate Barracuda. Moving over to the expansion slots we have two standard PCI connectors for the sound card and maybe a 3DFX Voodoo and two PCI Express slots, a 1X and a 16X. I would have preferred the 16X slot to be placed above the 1X slot to give us some additional room for the graphics card, especially if it's a dual slot one. The PCI Express 16X connector is a bit exotic for Windows 98 as it appeared as support for Windows 98 was approaching its end. And most of the graphics card manufacturers, although they released both AGP and PCI Express card models, of the same GPU, they didn't bother with the drivers for Windows 98 for PCI Express. Obviously having a GPU on a card with an AGP connector that works under Windows 98 doesn't offer any guarantees that the same GPU will work with Windows 98 because it has a PCI Express connector. Or does it? Are the electrical contacts that important after all? Since both AGP and PCI Express connect the GPU to the North Bridge. Another exotic part for Windows 98 is the memory. This motherboard supports only DDR2 that can be configured in dual channel mode. Both concepts were a few years away at the launch of Windows 98. But no matter the type, RAM never created any issues with Windows 98 for me before this project. The CPU we are going to use today is the Intel Pentium 4 Northwood running at 3 GHz. Although I started this project with two sticks of 1GB each for dual channel, after some benchmarks I decided to continue with just one stick of 512MB in order not to patch windows to support more RAM. As far as dual channel is concerned, you can see the chart with dual channel enabled and a single memory module of 512MB capacity but with a fan pointed towards the passively cooled x 300 SE graphics card. Next we move to the graphics cards and we start with the PCX5750 that is a PCI Express version of the FX5700. The GPU in this graphics card doesn't support natively PCI Express so Nvidia added a chip that they called the high speed interconnect that facilitates the conversion from AGP to PCI Express. This chip is covered by the passive radiator positioned between the active fan radiator and the PCI Express connector. The next graphics card is the PCI Express version of the 6800 GS that will be our top contender from Team Green. My selection of Nvidia graphics cards was random, both are in the medium and the medium high segment for their generation and both of them should theoretically be supported as their AGP counterparts have Windows 98 drivers. As far as Windows 98 is concerned, Nvidia only provides drivers up until the last graphics card of the 6000 series. From ATI we have the passively cooled Radeon X300 SE, an entry card, the only one in our list today that only has one connector. 
The other Radeon we have today is the X850 XT that is placed in the high segment as performance goes. Both cards from Team Red were also randomly picked as they were the first I came across when I looked up for supported graphics cards, as the X850 are listed as the last cards officially supported by ATI for Windows 98. Let's put everything together. The bias for the motherboard is pretty basic and we're going to disable some CPU features like the thermal throttling and the hyper threading in order not to be wasteful since Windows 98 only recognizes one core. Next we're going to set the primary graphics adapter to PCI Express and disable a lot of other features that we will not be using in Windows. Moving on to the topic of the drivers, the PCX5750 always locks up the system after the first restart following the driver's installation. The 6800GS displays artifacts after the installation of the driver. Although tested on a Windows XP machine, the card works fine. This behavior was consistent as I repeated the installation procedure two times. Still there was another attempt after I removed the X300SE and the NVIDIA driver would install and I could benchmark the card but only in direct 3D applications. Anything OpenGL would create this issue. Trying to reinstall the driver resulted in the artifacts returning. But I got some DirectX scores from the 6800GS and we will look at those a little bit later. The driver I used for both cards was the unofficial 8269 that allowed me to install these cards. None of the official drivers recognized these cards and probably Nvidia had a good reason for that. On the Radeon side I used the 6.2 WME driver that created absolutely no issues for the X300. The X850 was problematic to say at least. Right after the installation the control center couldn't find the driver. Still, moving to device manager we can see that the graphics card is recognized, but there's something preventing it from starting. We will access the properties and disable the graphics card in this hardware profile and restart the PC. After the restart we are greeted again by the control center that doesn't have the driver. We take this opportunity to go to the display settings and increase the resolution or the bit depth and restart again. We are greeted with artifacts and we are forced to manually restart the PC. And this time we go into safe mode where we inspect the graphics card. At this point I almost lost hope for the X850 and stopped the recording. But I did uninstall the driver from device manager. Once Windows was restarted I was asked again about the driver and I pointed it to the unpacked folder and everything installed successfully, even the control center stopped complaining. I set the resolution and color depth and applied the changes and everything was fine. Now we take a bit of time to look at the information about the X850 and the onboard GMA950 Intel.
Now let's move to the benchmarks and we start with 3 d Mark 99, one of the few tests where the 6800 was present and surprisingly has the upper hand over the X850 XT. The story repeats itself in 3 d Mark 2000, but by the time we reach 3 d Mark 2001, the X850 XT is much closer and I'm willing to bet that it would have gotten better results if 3 d Mark 2003 would have ran on Windows 98. Aquamark 3 has a surprise for us, as the X850 XT absolutely refused to complete it. Next we have benchmarks from games, where the X300 SE battles the mighty X850 XT, with no surprises. Except for Expandables, where we got better scores for X300 compared to the X850. But all of the other tests left me with the impression that the numbers on the models of the cards actually represent some form of performance rating, as where the X850 would get a score, the X300 would get less than half that score. If the X850 gets an 8, the X300 gets a 3. Now let's enjoy some well-deserved time off from the benchmarks, driver or Windows installation and we start with Return to Castle Wolfenstein where the X850 XT is more than adequate. And we follow it with Quake 3 that uses the same engine and where the frames roll around like it's nothing. Three frags left. Unreal Tournament 1999 initially felt a bit constrained, but once I checked the settings and mostly the driver for any limitation, I was able to come back to it and it provided more than double the number of frames. Railroad Tycoon 3 was one of my favorite games in the early 2000s, having spent too many hours hauling people and merchandise between cities. <laughs> 
Before we assess the performance of the X300SE, let's look at some information about it. And here we have a side-by-side -side with the X850 XT having the upper hand in anything but the price. And we continue the comparison with the game driver where I couldn't get over 50 frames per second, no matter the settings in the control center. So I went into the game menu and under options, gameplay, max frame rate, you can disable any form of limitation. But unfortunately the game physics looks tied to this frame limiter and the time in the game would double in speed as the number of frames the X300 could push to the screen reached 100. You can imagine the situation was far worse for the X850. But keep the limiter on and the game is smooth as butter. The next game we look at side by side is Halo, a game that created many issues on Windows 98 and seemingly runs modestly on the X300 and fairly decent on the X850, with high settings in 1024x768. But since the game is barely playable on the X300, I decided to cut the shadows and also reduce the texture quality to medium. And although the game didn't improve significantly on the X300, it no longer drops under 20 frames per second. And also the X850 sees some additional 20 frames per second. It's now time to step it down a bit and amass a fortune into a Swiss bank account with Tropico. Next we have Need for Speed Porsche, a game that we typically would have played on Windows 98. Since no one builds a Windows 98 PC with just Windows 98 in mind, let's try to assess DOS performance by running Phil's DOS benchmark pack for the X300, as the other graphic cards make even less sense to be used under DOS. And here are the results. And when it came to DOS, 
I remembered that I forgot to present the sound card we used for this project, the Sound Blaster Live 5.1 that provides great Windows 98 compatibility. This system turned out to be a very fast DOS machine, even with the most budget-oriented graphics card we used today. In the end, the graphic cards from NVIDIA failed because there was no official support for Windows 98 for any PCI Express card. Also, the support for Radeons was shady and we had to resort to all sorts of schemes to get the X850 working. But after all, that is something that happens with the drivers in Windows XP as well. Just not on this scale. Still, after the driver is installed, the performance is there. Today's comparison was more like a survival rather than a versus between ATI and NVIDIA, since officially no PCI Express cards are supported, but at least we found out that the PCI Express slot is not the limiting factor in running Windows 98 with a PCI Express graphics card. I still think that there were a number of factors that went against NVIDIA today, first being the drivers, but I think that the presence of the onboard graphics card that couldn't be fully disabled or the unsupported chipset didn't help either. And I'm willing to give it another go in a future project. Thank you for watching and see you next time.